All right, greetings everybody. Welcome back. Happy Monday. Welcome back everyone. I'm going to get everyone a second to get logged in here. It's still pulling people into the room. And then we will get things underway. All right. So today, guys, we and ladies, of course, we will be covering drawing tools, a drawing tool, something simple yet often overlooked, something that we can use and apply to our, our trading every day that a lot of times we don't necessarily implement. A lot of times we get focused in on the price and we forget the little tools that are so easy to apply that can help us get a, get a clearer picture of what the market's doing. Uh, we're going to start off as always, guys. I'm going to throw some disclaimers on screen. I'll read through the first. I'll leave the next ones on for a short bit thereafter so you can either screen capture them or read them yourself. And then I'll introduce myself, obviously, those of you that already know me. Hey, Chris is here. Uh, but then we'll get into things and we'll be talking about the drawing tools. And if you have questions as we go along at any point in time, just feel free to type them out. If I don't respond right away, don't panic. I will get to your question if I feel like I'm in the flow with something. Uh, I might save your question for you know maybe a couple minutes later. So, but ask the question as you feel it. You aren't interrupting me. Don't worry about it. Let's keep it fun. Let's keep it casual. Let's have a good time. Let's learn some things, and let's increase our trading knowledge. So, starting off today, guys. Like I said, we're gonna go ahead and move into our disclaimers now. Here we go. So. Earn to Trade is provided to you for educational purposes only. Earn to Trade is not a financial services company. Earn to Trade does not accept any liability for loss or damage as a result of the reliance on this information contained herein. This includes educational material, price quotes and charts and analysis. Please be aware of the risks associated with trading the financial markets. Never invest more money than you can risk losing. The risks involved in trading are high and may not be suitable for all investors. Earn to Trade doesn't retain responsibility. As a result of using the data shown on its websites or webinars, the data and quotes contained may not be provided by exchanges, but rather by market makers. So prices may be different from exchange prices and may not be accurate to real time trading prices. Any examples used are not a recommendation to buy or sell or a solicitation to buy or sell futures, options, bonds or binaries or securities of any kind. The information and strategies and techniques discussed herein are property of earn to trade LLC. They may not be shared or distributed to another party without the express written consent of earn to trade LLC. Any trademarks or copyrights reference other than earn to trade are the property of the respective holders and not earn to trade LLC. All right, folks, the next ones I'm going to go ahead and throw up on the screen. Please just take a moment to read through them or screen capture them and read them at your own pace. And moving along. <clears throat> and one more. Well, technically two more, but here's our next one. And one more, and I mean it this time. This is the final one, and then we're on to the good stuff. Okay. 
So today, like I said already, we are going to be covering drawing tools. Some of you that possibly joined a little bit late, there you go. Now you know what we're covering today. We are going to be covering drawing tools. Those are those pesky little tools up in the top left corner of our charts, as you'll be seeing here shortly. Just simple things like trend lines, horizontal lines, vertical lines, what have you, Fibonacci. All those fun things that we can apply very quickly and easily to our charts, not directly classified as an indicator in and of themselves, generally speaking, uh, with the exception of Fibonacci, but things that we can just add to the charts simply by just drawing them on there. Uh, and like I said earlier, if you have any questions, definitely feel free to ask. Please do not feel like you're interrupting me. You are not. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Chris. I am a trader or an, an educator here at Earn to Trade. Um, I've, I'm responsible for all of the daily recap videos as well as the webinars as well as the educational material as well. So you've probably heard my voice before or talked with me in a, in a mentoring session one way or another. But if you haven't, hi, hello. I like to be uh, casual and easygoing, so please don't be intimidated by my big scary voice. Let's have a good time. Let's learn some things. And, and guys, if you have any questions as we go along, like I said, please just, just type them out. I'll get to them as soon as I can, possibly right away, maybe a couple minutes later, but we will get to them. At the end of all of it, I will have a question and answer session. If you don't have any questions, if you feel that everything I'm saying is rather straightforward, um, then I'll take that as a compliment, say, thinking that uh, you know I've, I've done my job, I've clarified things, and you don't have anything, and I've answered your questions before you had a chance to ask them. So you don't have to ask anything. You don't have to type anything. Don't feel obligated to. Like I said, we're just here, and I'm just letting you know that I am here for you if you need me. If not, I'm going to continue on, do my thing, and hopefully you gather some, info, some useful information from this and it can benefit your daily training. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and switch over to my charts at the moment. There we are. So we now have the charts on the screen. This is currently the euro dollar. So we're looking at a little bit of forex pair. We're looking at some 15-minute charts. It doesn't truly matter at this point because, like I said, we're going to be focusing in on the drawing tools, and all we really need is a chart. We've all seen these charts before, these beautiful charts. These are the charts that we have here to offer you at earn to trade um, But to begin with, all right, we're going to talk about the goal of the webinar. The goal is quite simple. We want to continue expanding our knowledge of trading and learn about the different drawing tools that you can apply on our platform and how they might be used to benefit your daily trading. A lot of these tools, or essentially all of them, you should have some experience with, or they should be available on other platforms, but there is no guarantee that all their platforms have all of these as well. But they shouldn't be too foreign for most of you if you have some trading experience. After the webinar, you should be able to begin using these drawing tools on your personal charts quickly and easily. That's the goal. I want to show you, introduce you to what these tools are. Uh, as well as how to apply them and get you comfortable with them in a way that you don't need me to apply them. However, if you do, obviously, we are here. That's what the mentoring sessions are for as well. Um, but anywho, so the drawing tools quite simply provide us with the benefit of clarifying what the market is doing one way or another. Put vaguely, that is essentially what all of them do. All of them help give us a little bit more of an insight by adding some visual representation that is clarifying what the market's doing, and whether it be a horizontal line, a trend line, what have you. Some of the things that we're going to be covering today, exactly what we're going to be covering today, will be the vertical line tool, the horizontal line tool, the trend line tool, the channel, the arrow line, the Fibonacci retracement, the box tool, as well as how to change the color and add remove all of these things. We'll start off with, because the beginning of that list that I just mentioned was the vertical line, and we like to work our way from left to right here. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to start off, guys, taking a look at the vertical line tool, as well as talk about why we might want to implement it. Now, to begin with, all of our tools are going to be found in the top left-hand corner of the chart, our drawing tools, that is top left corner of the chart, as you can see up here to the left. These tools, actually let's do this. Let's go ahead and add, I wasn't going to, uh, I wasn't going to do this, but it might make it a little bit easier to talk, you know, outline some of the things that I'm talking about. So here's the top left corner of the chart. Naturally guys, right here on the top left. Now, if you don't see this, if you don't, you know, if, you, if you're if you're looking for it and you, you can't find it, go down to the bottom left, navigate to the bottom left where we have this plus 
pen tip as well as miniature graph and we're just simply going to click on the pen tip. The pen tip if you click it either adds or removes all of the drawing tools in the top left if they're not already preloaded for you. It's as easy as that. And if we want our crosshair back you know, if we, to help identify where price is currently located just above the pen tip, we just simply click on the crosshair, the plus looking sign. So we're going to click on that crosshair and we're going to be given the crosshair yet again. And then we can go and quickly navigate and look to the left or the right and see open highs, closes, as well as current price. Pretty nifty, pretty easy. But at the moment, we're going to go ahead and turn that off. We're going to go back to, we're going to go back to uh, our, our, our drawing tools in the top left. And like I said, we're going to start off by taking a look at the vertical line, the vertical line, right, going up and down. So I'm going to click on the vertical line in the top left, directly next to the arrow. I'm going to click on the vertical line in the top left. And I'm going to go to some location on my chart. And let's say uh, at, let's say at, let's say we have a news event at 10.30. At 10.30, we're expecting a high-impact news event, and we don't want to be, you know, we, we, we want to be aware of it, or we want to mark off when it happened if we're looking at it in the past, or we want to mark it off in the future, and we just scroll our charts to the right, and we mark it off at that time. The vertical line tool is a very easy tool to use in order to mark off possible news events or potentially the open and close of the cash session. Uh, just different events that while we're trading, we can mark off the beginning, we can mark off the end, and as we're trading throughout the day, as we approach this vertical line, we know when price finally reaches it, that there is, uh, we're getting close to it, we know that something is about to happen, and it's just a friendly reminder to ourselves of whatever that something is. So if I wanted to be on the lookout for a high-impact news event, I could take that vertical line tool just like I did and mark them all off. And then what I could do is change the color of it, simply by going up here to the top right and this now once again I should say this is something we need to do before we add the tool we click the color box and then we click the vertical line tool but then we're going to go over here and we're going to place our line and all of a sudden we have ourselves a red line possibly letting us know that we have a high impact news event if that's what we've decided we're going to use we're going to use red lines for our high impact news events and if we're trading throughout the day and we have a position that's open as we creep on into that high impact event and we're worried about the excess volatility or volume changes at that time we might want to consider exiting our position before that happens or potentially waiting till it passes uh, before we end up jumping in either or it's just a tool that allows us to notify ourselves, or predominantly to notify ourselves of an event that's happening at an exact time. How you use it is obviously going to be entirely up to you, but that is just one way of particularly using it. Now to remove these tools, we just talked about how to change the color. To remove these tools, we're simply going to be clicking on the trash can with the X on it. Now the first thing that we need to do is go back to our arrow which is the far left corner of the drawing tools box. And then we're going to come on, we're going to click on it, and then we're going to go up here and we're going to click the trash can. Now, another way that we can remove these tools is by once again clicking on it. You'll notice that it gets highlighted. It gets a little bit broader. We have a little bit more of a highlight around the tool itself. Then we're just going to simply hit the delete key. The delete key is a shortcut, so we don't need to actually scroll all the way over here and hit the trash can. However, both of these options do work. So we can click it, delete it, click it, delete it, and once again, any color that I want to set that vertical line tool to, uh, I simply change the color before I draw the line. So if I want a yellow line to mark off some medium impact news that's going to be occurring at, you know, say 3.30, I'm going to go over here and click at 3.30. And using the crosshair at this point in time does make it a little bit easier because it does show your times, obviously, up at the top, as you can see by the gray box. Um, but anywho, so we're going to click, and then every other line that I draw thereafter, every other vertical line, will also be orange. Well, yellow, depending on how you view that. We will have lines for days and days and days. And then if we wanted to go ahead and, like I said, mark off some, some high impact news, we can simply go up here, change the color to red. Now every line we draw thereafter is going to be red. Rather simple idea, rather simple concept, nothing too crazy there. Now let's go ahead and get rid of these tools just like I mentioned. We're simply going to highlight them after clicking on the arrow and hitting the delete key. All right. So we've got the vertical line tool covered. 
we we we've established that we can use it as a as a possible time frame alert we can use it to possibly mark off the cash open and close of a session we can use it to mark off say lunch we can use it to mark off certain times or certain locations throughout the day where we expect something to be ha something to of significance to be happening for whatever reason all right rather rather useful tool all right now our next one very very similar we're just going to be going over to the horizontal line tool now the horizontal line tool is is a must in my opinion the horizontal line tool makes it very easy to outline areas of both support and resistance which is ridiculously valuable to us so same thing as the vertical line tool i'm first going to decide what color i want this line to be and then i'm going to just simply click on the charts and place it where i want it i've already highlighted as you can see the horizontal line tool which is directly next to the vertical line tool now i'm going to decide which color i want so let's go with a green here let's go with a nice green maybe call that a forest green or some kind of spearmint green so we've got our green here now i'm going to note use the crosshair to help identify an area of potential resistance here and then i'm simply going to click just click the charts once and now i have been given a green line say i want to mark off an area of support that i noticed in the market and go down here find that area of support and once again simply going to click adding and removing these lines is exactly the same as the vertical line changing the color is exactly the same as the vertical line adding and removing all of the drawing tools and changing the color of all of the drawing tools is going to be exactly the same all the way through this but by doing this by using the horizontal line like we're talking about right now one of the beautiful things about it is we're given a very easy way to outline a high area or a low area or a resistance area or a support area of the market and then we can potentially find entry locations off of it because we marked it off over here now we have a perfectly straight line we don't have to try to freehand draw a perfectly straight line we know how difficult that can be and we can simply wait for price to come back down to this location we notice support being shown here in the past so as we wait for price to come back down to this 1.23250, we could be on the lookout for a possible buy if support is shown. And what do you know if support was shown? So we very potentially could have been in for a buy here, which would have blown through the resistance that was shown there, but rocketed up quite nicely. Same thing could be said for resistance. If we notice resistance was being held here, we notice we rejected from this location quite a few times. We drew excuse me, we drew our resistance line and we just waited for price to come back to it. We could simply wait for price to come around this location. If resistance is shown, hello, hello, we've then given ourselves an entry location to look in for short. So very valuable tool there. That is the horizontal line tool. Once again, very, very good and primarily used to identify areas of both support and resistance. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these, delete these and move on to the next one so remember deleting these very very simple we're going to make sure that the arrow is highlighted so we're going to select the line with the arrow highlighted you'll see the little hand appear and then we're either going to hit the delete key or we're going to click we're going to come up here to the trash can and click the trash can that's simple and remember if we wanted to change the color of those lines before we draw them we come up to the color box pick whatever color we want say we want a nice a nice purple we go over here, we change the color, then we click on a horizontal line, and all of a sudden we have now drawn this area of resistance with a purple line, right? Pretty simple stuff. To delete it, same thing. Once again, go over to the arrow, select the arrow, then click on the line, and we either hit the delete key or go up to the trash can and click the trash can. Very simple stuff. Next, we're going to start getting a little bit spicier here. We talked about the vertical line tool, and we talked about the horizontal line tool now we're going to get a little bit crazier and we're going to talk about the trend line tool very simple in the sense that it is uh, used it, to you generally measure areas of support and resistance just at an angle so to speak but with the trend line tool although it draws the line straight we have to click twice so i'm going to make i'm going to choose the color ahead of time as always we're going to go ahead and go with orange this time and we're going to then click our trend line tool if we haven't already which is the diagonal one it's the one directly to the right of the horizontal line the fourth option over overall we have the arrow then we have the vertical then we have the horizontal and then we have the trend line which is once again the diagonal single line then i'm going to come over here to the charts 
All right. And say I want to just measure the trajectory. I'm going to click once and it's going to create my base point. Now, as you can see, that base point is not moving. Now, as far as I move my mouse, it is going to continuously stretch this line. It's going to make it a perfectly straight line to whatever end point I decide. When I click again, it's going to it's going to lock in that end point and then I'm going to have a straight line from point A to point B. So here we are. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click and all of a sudden I have drawn a complete trend line. Now, the trend line tool once again is used the name kind of sells itself is generally used to measure a trend. It's used to measure or to draw a trend line in and of itself, which very often we like to refer to as a diagonal area of support or resistance. So the value in the trend line in and of itself is quite simple. Say we notice that the market is moving up here and we notice that the highs are continuously getting higher but also rejecting along a very slim, similar trajectory. We're, we're adhering to uh, a rather consistent angle here with our highs that we're rejecting from. And it's, it's the, re the rejects that we're rather interested in. Now. By paying attention to this, noticing that the market is constantly pinging off of this level on the way up, we might be able to use this tool to better identify where to expect price to reject from again. So by noticing that the market reject from here, rejected from here and here and here over and over again, and just stretching this line at that same angle outward, when price does work its way back up to it, we might have us, ourselves an expectation that price should be ready to fall. So it could provide us an entry opportunity for a short in that situation. Now adding and removing the trend tool is, is the same as all the other tools that we already talked about. We're first going to highlight the arrow in the top left. Then we're going to come over to the trend line and we're going to click on it. We're going to get this nice highlight over it. And we're either going to hit the delete key or we're going to go up here to the top left and click the trash can and it will be gone. Remember, changing the color is as easy as just simply picking a color and then drawing the tool. If I want it to be in a light purple, I'm going to select light purple, I'm going to click on the trend line tool, and then I'm just going to draw it. Remember, one click places the base, and two clicks finalizes it. Now she's all done. Now I should note that if we go back to the arrow, we can actually modify this. So if we had drawn this trend line tool, we were a little bit sloppy, and say we had moved it, and for whatever reason it was a little bit too high here, and we didn't like that placement, we can go over to the arrow in the top left, highlight the arrow, click on the arrow that is, come back down to our tool, just like we're going to delete it. We're going to click on it, okay? We're going to come down here to either base point, all right, to the base point or the end point, and we're just simply going to drag, all right? Whatever point we grab is going to be the point that moves while the other one stays constant, while the other one stays stable, doesn't move. So because we were a little bit too high, I can just simply drag this down and give ourselves a little bit more accurate trend line there. Same thing goes for deleting, like we talked about. But the value in the trend line tool is, is just as valuable as the horizontal support and resistance tool. Very, very similar. Allows us to get a better expectation of where the market's going to reject from than simply trying to draw that in our eyes. We don't want to think, you know, we don't always want to make things harder for ourselves. Just like the old adage, think smarter, you know, work smarter, not harder. And the trend line tool, the horizontal tool, that's, a, that's what all of it is designed to do. Yes, you, you all are, are probably more than brilliant enough to be able to imagine these areas, but why imagine and be a little bit rough and, and try to estimate it when we can have exact? Exact is always going to be the better option, especially when it's just so easy to apply. If we were to look at this, for example, we notice all of these highs sloping downward at a very similar angle. We can use that trend line tool to give ourselves an area of resistance. So we're going to go from the top to the bottom. And we're just going to get an idea. It's going to give us a picture of what the market's doing on the decline here. And possibly using this area of resistance on the way down as an entry point for some cells if we work our way back in. Once again, very easy to add, very easy to set the color, very easy to remove. All of it is the same in that department. So, And the same applies if we wanted to use a trend line tool to find an area of support on the way up. Let's go ahead and turn this to green. And let's go back to that trend line. And let's draw off some support. We notice the market moving up at a rather similar trajectory here. And say, oops, look at that. We didn't get the line as high as we wanted it. So we just go back to the arrow, click on the arrow, and we can adjust the base point, move it over a tad. And now we're given a very accurate angle of incline here where the market was moving up at a rather consistent angle. And every time it worked its way back down towards our trend line, we noticed support was shown. 
So very valuable use, uh, or very valuable tool here, very simple to use, and that is the trend line tool. So next, we're going to move on over. We're going to move on over to the channel. The channel is going to be used exactly the same as the trend line tool, with the exception that it is going to be drawing two lines at once. And we can we can control the width and the, se the separation between these two lines. So here we go. So we have gone over from left to right. The left is the arrow. That's what we're going to be clicking on to highlight the tools that we've drawn, or to simply just move the charts around by clicking and dragging. The next one over is the horizontal, I'm sorry, is the vertical line. Once again, this is the one that we were talking about using as a, as a divider, perhaps, of, of the cash open and close or potential news releases, whatever you find useful to mark off at an exact time. The next is the horizontal line tool, great for measuring bolts or line, marking off areas of support and resistance. The next is the trend line, great for marking off straight areas of, well, diagonal areas, if you will, but using a straight line to identify a diagonal area of, once again, support or resistance, aka measuring some type of a trend, getting an idea where the market might reject from on its way up or might rally from on its way up or down. Next is the channel. Let's go ahead and make this channel this goldenrod color, just for the sake of you know, keeping the colors changing. Now the same thing applies to the channel. To apply the channel, we're first going to select our color that we want the channel to be. Then we're going to click on the channel icon itself, which is just simply two trend lines next to each other. And just like the trend line, we're going to click once. We're going to click twice. Now this is where it gets fun. After we click twice with the trend line, it's over. It's all locked in. We have base point and we have our end point. With the channel, by our second click, there's a third function that's going to be happening. That third function. So we've only clicked twice at this point. That third function, as we move our mouse up and down, dictates how wide we want this channel to be, how big the area that's highlighted in the color that we chose to be. So if I was trying to outline this area and say that we had a nice channel here, this isn't the best example of a, uh, of a channel, but it is one nonetheless. We've got ourselves an angle where we're trying to outline where price is trading in, for the most part, where price is mostly trading in. So by clicking from the left to the right, we're going to start off drawing at the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter. And then we're just simply going to drag that line down and identify the bottom of that channel. Now let's see if we can find a better example because I'm not a big fan of this one. So same way to delete the channel is, the, is everything else that we've talked about. We're going to go back to the top left, click on the arrow, then we're going to click on the channel, and we're going to hit the delete key. Let's see if we can find ourselves a little bit of a better channel though, better, better usage here. Let's see. Ah, this this will work. This will do. This will do right here. So I'm going to say, all right, during this period of the market, during, I'm sorry, this period of the market right here, we'll use some vertical lines to mark it off here and here. During this period of the market, we noticed that price was uh, trading at a rather consistent range downwards. So we're not, this isn't a sideways range. Don't think of it that way. It's not a sideways range. The market is moving downward, but we're trading between the highs and the lows at a rather consistent pace. This is an opportunity where we might use the channel because the angle of decline is similar on both the high end and the low end. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a channel. I'm going to set the color to this goldenrod color again. I'm going to click on that channel icon. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to start with the top, just like drawing a trend line on the top of all this. And then once my trend line on the top is drawn, okay, I'm going to click again and end my endpoint. And then I'm going to drag it down until that bottom line, which should be similar if I've correctly identified a channel, is, is at the bottom area, which is being treated as a level of support on the way down, just like the top area is treated as a level of resistance on the way down. And now by doing this, we very clearly, let's move that, uh, oops, let's move this, uh, this purple line over here a little bit. There we go. We have very clearly identified an area in the market where price is trading in between while making an overall directional heading. 
So despite price moving downwards and not moving completely sideways, we're still able with the channel line tool, able to give ourselves an idea if, of where price is going to be rejecting from and bouncing from along its directory. So just like a trend line tool, where we're generally just looking to see one or the other, we're generally looking to see where price is simply re rejecting from at one point, or we could be looking to see where price is you know, finding support at while it's moving upwards or downwards. The channel allows us to look at all of it at the same time. The channel will draw a trend line on the top and the bottom, as well as highlight the area in between in the color that we chose. I'm sure you guys can see the value in such a simple tool that is very good at simply outlining an area, highlighting an area in the market. Let's pretend, just that you really stable home the value in this. Let us pretend that all we had, if we were to go back in time and all we had was this info in the market, with this info from here to here, let's pretend that everything beyond that second purple line doesn't exist. It didn't happen yet. We can use this channel line tool this channel tool to mark off this area and just simply extend it outward and pay attention to price as it passes that purple line where we would pretend that price was currently located at and we'd have a good or good 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 idea where we should expect price to be bouncing from or rejecting from as long as it continues this path and the minute that it finally breaks out of that trend we have an expectation that the 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 channel that the the, what the market was currently partaking in, that there's something different going on, and we should no longer expect that. And at that point, we'd consider it just the same as a breakout like we talked about in our last webinar. So using the channel line tool could have provided us a very nice opportunity to get in for a short here, or potentially even a long down here, right? And the minute that we broke out of that, that'd be pretty useful to us. That'd be pretty useful to us, especially if we were in a long. We might want to just hold on to that position for a little while and see how she goes in before she encounters her next level of resistance, which was over here before we want to abandon ship near that 1.22900. But very valuable tool there, the channel tool. Next, folks, we're going to move on. We're going to delete these. The same as always, just like I've already talked about quite a few times now, just going to use the arrow to click on these indicators that have already been drawn, these lines, that have, these drawing tools that have already been drawn, and just hit the delete key. Our next one is going to be rather simple. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to explain with this one. It's the arrow tool that is directly to the right of the channel tool. Directly to the right of the channel tool, we have the arrow tool. This is simply a tool that once clicked on, we're going to be drawing an arrow. All right? Wherever we click, just like drawing the trend line, it's going to create a base point, a point that's just locked in. And wherever we move our mouse is going to be where this arrow is pointing. And we can stretch it out nice and long, we can put it in nice and short, we can go up, we can go down, we can do anything we want with this line. But whatever we want to do with this line, we can drag it to it and say, hey, we're trying to you know, point off something over here. We're just going to click again, and that's going to lock it in as it sits. Just like all of the other indicators, if we want to move it or adjust it, we go back to the arrow tool, we click on either one of these base points, and that will be the point that becomes free, and we can adjust it and move it to wherever we want. Some people use the arrow line as, as a trend line tool in and of itself. How you use it is going to be entirely up to you. It is simply an arrow. It is simply an arrow. Don't overcomplicate it. We can use it to point to the directional heading of a market, like I said, using it like a trend line tool with a big old arrow at the end of it so we don't ever get confused on which way the market's heading. There's a lot of usage for it. Um, I could use it while I'm here running the webinar to as just a simple drawing tool in and of itself to help me identify, you know, help you know, illustrate an area in the market, um, a highlight or, or point to an area in the market that I want you guys to look at, such as this, and say, hey, look at this right over here. This is just this is just a wonderful thing right there. It doesn't matter how many arrows you draw. At the end of the day, it's all the same. And changing the color, remember, if you want to change the color, you're just going to set the color before you draw the tool. We picked blue. Now we're going to go over here, click the charts, and now we've got blue lines. Right? Very simple idea here. Very simple. Right? Stretch it however we want, put it anywhere we want. Very simple idea. It's just an arrow. However you would like to use an arrow, however you can apply to use an arrow, it's entirely up to you. Very simple. Very straightforward. To delete them, remember, it's always the same. We're going to click on that arrow in the bottom, or I'm sorry, the top left. Now we're going to start clicking on all of these and hitting the delete key on all of them. And before you know it, all of those arrows are gone in just a matter of seconds. It doesn't take long. So arrow two, very simple. Not much to talk about with that one. 
Next to the arrow tool, however, we do have something to talk about, and that is the Fibonacci retracement tool. Fibonacci retracement tool. It's a hell of a word. Now, the Fibonacci is something we're not going to go too, too big into detail with today. We do have some lessons, beautiful lessons on the Fibonacci uh, retracement tool if you are interested in learning a little bit more. I'm sure in the future I will actually be running a webinar exclusively on how to use uh, Fibonacci retracement uh, as that is a very, very deep subject. Um, it's a lot deeper than simply using a trend line, a horizontal line. But Fibonacci retracement essentially does all the math for you using the Fibonacci sequence to measure out areas in the market that we expect price to turn out. That's the short synopsis of it. So if I wanted to measure this move, I'm going to always go from the left to the right. I've highlighted the Fibonacci tool, which is just the three horizontal lines. Okay, It's three horizontal lines, lines on top of each other. Say I want to make this, let's make this, we'll, we'll go orange. So we're going to make this orange. And I'm looking at the market, and I want to identify an area, or I want to give myself some type of projection of where the market might return to a bullish manner at once it has begun rejecting. So I'm going to go from the left to the right, the bottom of the move, the top of the move, and I'm going to slide my mouse to the right to however far I want to extend it to. Oh, I just drew an extra one there. One second. Let's get rid of that. There we go. So I'm going to slide my mouse to the right wherever I want to extend these levels outwards to, and I'm going to click. Now, once again, I've measured from the left to the right, from the bottom of the move to the top of the move, and the idea with the Fibonacci retracement tool is we're trying to give ourselves a, an expected area where the market might return to a bullish manner once it has begun falling downward. So we had this bullish move working our way upwards. Now we're just using the Fibonacci retracement tool to get an idea of how far the market's going to retrace back downwards before we continue to bounce and go back upwards. So I've measured from the left to the right, from the bottom to the top, and now I'm marked off with a few key areas. We have the 38.2%, okay, that's 38.2% retracement. We have the 50%, pretty straightforward, that's simply retracing 50% of the distance of this move from the top to the bottom. And then we have the 61.8%, which is often referred to as the golden zone, the golden fib level. This is widely referred to as one of the most accurate and one of the most reliable Fibonacci retracement levels in terms of looking for an opportunity for the market to pivot from. And in this one example, just right off the bat, and this wasn't planned ahead of time, we actually see some great responses to these levels. Immediately at the 38.2, the market started finding a little bit of support, but it didn't really quite uh, didn't quite hold. It, it, it really functioned more as a resistance, but a little bit of turbulence was shown at that 38.2 on the way back down. And we got stuck underneath it and it began functioning as a resistance essentially immediately triggering the market to fall pretty hard straight through the 50. But down here at 61.8, right around the 61.8, the market actually did begin finding some support where we worked our way right back up to that 38.2 where we had already found resistance and then rejected right back down towards that 61.8, dipped a little bit below, and the market went right back up and kind of smashed through all of those levels. But the idea behind that Fibonacci retracement is to get our – is to – is, is to help give us a better idea of where the market is going to retrace the initial move that we're looking at. So we generally don't want to look at these levels too, too far to the right, because once a whole lot of market history has happened in between, uh, we're no longer you know, measuring the retracement to this move because the market has already bounced and retraced around these levels. But the Fibonacci retracement tool, very straightforward, just like all the others. It's a little bit more uh, in-depth and has a little bit more uh, educational material that we can put behind it. But the, the key to remember when just simply applying the Fibonacci tool is always from left to right. Always from left to right, from swing low to swing high in this event, or from swing high if the market was moving downward, it would be from left to right, and it would be from swing high to swing low. So say we wanted to measure, let's say, do a Fibonacci retracement of here to here, this very long bearish swing. So we're going to do the same thing. Let's first go back and delete our level, our, our previous Fibonacci drawing, all done. And I'm going to go over here. I'm going to change it to, let's go with a light red here, almost a pink. I'm going to highlight my Fibonacci tool, which once again is the three horizontal lines. I'm going to go from the swing high to the swing low. And I'm going to be given the same areas. And once again, this is measuring the probable turning points in the market as it retraces back upwards. Here we are, and this is just simply using the Fibonacci sequence. We're given our 38.2, our 50%, and our 61.8%. Now, what do you know? The market bounced up to the 38.2, encountered a lot of resistance, 
and seemingly got stuck underneath it. We had one wick that actually pushed up to the 50, rejected hard, and price continued to stay stuck underneath that 38.2, came up stuck underneath that 38.2, finally closed above, broke above, and offward we went. But another great example of Fibonacci showing its colors, showing some value. So Fibonacci is something that we could talk about. Fibonacci retracement is something we could talk about for quite a long time, and we will in future sessions. And if you are interested in on it, don't worry, don't fret. You can go right over to the educational section, and we have plenty of information on how to use and apply the Fibonacci tool yourself already pre-recorded for you. But that is the Fibonacci retracement tool, changing the color, adding and delete, adding, removing, and changing the colors all the same as all the other tools. Next, we have a bit of an interesting tool here. The one to the right of the Fibonacci tool, we have this, this box, right? Pretty straightforward. The box is just going to be another drawing tool that allows us to highlight a particular area in the market. We can use the box to highlight an area uh, of potential support or resistance, but we don't want to, an area that we might not want to, I'll redraw these, we're going to change it actually to green. So I've picked the color as green, I've gone to my, my, my box tool or rectangle tool, and I'm going to say, okay, around this location, I've noticed a lot of turbulence in the market, but it's not at one exact price point. So I don't want to just use the simple horizontal line. I'd rather use the box to get an idea and say this is a location, a roundabout location that the market seems to be reversing at, seems to be finding support at, but it's not an exact price. We have a little bit of slippage along the way. So we use the box, and we're going to go ahead and click once, and then we're going to be given this big wide spread here. Just like the Fibonacci tool, it's going to color in the entire area that we scroll our mouse to up or down, however wide we want to make it. But we're going to go over here, and we're going to go ahead and mark this off just like this. So I've marked off an area that the market has seemingly been finding support at. Not seemingly, it was finding support around this location. It was consistently reversing every time price got into this green box. It makes it a nice visual, uh, it makes it very easy for us to simply quickly look at the charts and say, hey, look, we, were, we continuously find support as we enter into the zone somewhere between the 690 and the 620, uh, giving ourselves a, a, bit of a, a bit of a spread there, not too, too wide, less than 10 pips, but wide enough that we don't want to simply use one straight horizontal line. Then we're going to go ahead and say, hey, when the market works its way back down into this green box, we might want to be considering buying opportunities because every time price has been working its way into this box, we've been noticing it working its way back out. So we could consider this buying zone, this green zone, as we could consider this green zone as our buy zone, where the lower in the box, the better we are as long as we're not closing beyond the box. But anywhere in this box, we could consider an acceptable buy looking for the market to bounce out of it. And any any entry in this box would have actually been proven profitable at this point in time unless you held, you know, for, well, uh, yeah, there's just any buy in that box would have been profitable to, to all the way up to today's current price. So, very valuable tool. Once again, could be applied the other way around. Say I wanted to mark off an area of resistance that wasn't an exact line, but just an area in the market where I was noticing a lot of rejections happening at. So I want to use this box and say, hey, let's outline an area in the market. Let's outline an area in the market where we tend to see price reverse at. So potentially an acceptable shorting zone. The same could be done here, right? And the minute that we start closing uh, above this zone would be the minute that we no longer consider it an applicable area of resistance, just like standard support and resistance. So that's how to use the horizontal box. Well, I'm sorry, not horizontal box. How to use the box or rectangle tool. You can call it what you want. I'm calling it a box because it is actually a perfect square in the drawing tool. A lot of platforms will refer to it as a rectangle tool and draw it more as a rectangle. But at the end of the day, you can draw it however you want it. You can draw a perfect square if you want to. You can draw a rectangle. You can highlight the entire screen if you want to. If you want to get real crazy and turn the entire screen orange, it would be literally as easy as just doing that. Clicking once, dragging your mouse to the bottom right corner, and clicking again. Now we have an orange overlay on everything. Now why you'd want to do that, who knows, but just letting you know it is possible. It is possible. So next we have really our final thing that we're going to talk about and that is the text tool the text tool is an interesting tool that i was saving for the end because it can be applied to every single drawing tool that i had just mentioned so the way the text tool works is i'm going to click on the t and i'm going to type in let's say resistance 
Okay? I'm going to type in resistance because I'm trying to identify an area of resistance. Then I'm going to click on a line, the horizontal line in particular, because I'm trying to outline an area of resistance in the market. And I'm going to just click, and it's going to draw that horizontal line. And as you look to the left, you'll notice that this line that is orange, and once again, you can change the color ahead of time to whatever color you want, you're going to notice that it says resistance. Just in case I forgot. Now say I want to add support. Okay, say down here I want to add support and I don't want to forget that it's support and I want to label it as support. I'm just going to go to the text tool. I'm going to type support. I'm going to go to my horizontal line tool. Let's change the color to green. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on that area that I have identified as an area of support. It's going to mark it off. And if we look to the left, now it says support. It's that simple. Very, very simple. We can apply the text tool to any one of these, even the arrow, for example. So say I want to go ahead and say, this is an arrow. I'm going to type this is an arrow. I'm going to highlight this is an arrow. I'm going to pick the color I want, say purple. And I'm going to point at whatever I want. Now, on top of the arrow, it says, this is an arrow. Once again, very straightforward. Changing the color and changing or changing the color and removing it is all exactly the same as everything we've talked about. To remove these, I'm going to go back to my arrow. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to select the line, and I'm simply going to hit delete, or I'm going to select my line and go over to the trash can and click the trash can. Same thing applies to all the indicators, just like we already discussed. So using these drawing tools, ladies and gentlemen, while seemingly very simple, because it, in truth, is very simple, can be a very easy way to organize our thoughts visually on the charts and, and, and give ourselves an advantage over the markets and help better, to help give us a better visual representation of what might actually be occurring. By drawing off an area of resistance instead of trying to eyeball it in our head, it makes it much easier to anticipate where that market might be rejecting from if we've identified one. And the same thing applies to support and channels and trend lines and all of the above. Same thing with the Fibonacci retracement, where we might, if we're just simply using a drawing tool to get ourselves an idea in the future where we might expect price to be reversing at and be on the lookout. Okay, So these drawing tools, while very simple, are extremely useful. If you're not using some type of drawing tools on your chart while you're trading, you probably want to ask yourself why. Now, you don't need to, of course, and you're not, you don't have to. I'm not trying to bully you into using the drawing tools, but I strongly encourage it. I strongly encourage at least playing around with them and seeing what you think. The drawing tools are straightforward, very easy to use, as you just saw, and quite wonderful. They can increase trading accuracy by allowing us to avoid simple mistakes because maybe we potentially eyeballed something wrong or looked at it or we were looking at the charts for a couple hours already and we were kind of getting a little bit fizzled out and we made a mistake, you know, looking a little bit from the left to the right trying to, you know, pinpoint that entry. The drawing tools, had we drawn a perfect straight line from that area of resistance that we were looking at, we might have allowed ourselves to get in at the right price where we accidentally got in a little bit too early, or potentially we got in at an area that we thought was resistance, but really it had already closed over that area of resistance, and we got ourselves into a mistake where we are now losing money. We don't want that. We want to be making money. That's the goal, and that's what we're all here to do, and that's what we all do every day when we're sitting here and we're you know, our, our, our goal every day is, is to obviously is to be pulling profit. We're, we're not going to win every trade, but we are going to do our darndest to win every trade. And when we have something that can give us an advantage, why would we not use it, folks? So drawing tools, straightforward, very simple, strongly recommend that you take a peek at them and practice using them. But other than that, folks, if anyone has any and all questions at this point, please feel free to ask them. Like I said, this webinar was going to be a very straightforward, rather uh, rather simplistic one, however, extremely useful. And sometimes it's the most simple things that generally give us the greatest benefit, greatest uh, addition to our trading arsenal is, or, or refinement by just simply touching back up on things that we already knew about but never really gave too much attention to because we kind of, you know, felt a little bit too cocky or a little bit too confident and, and say, oh, well, you know, I don't need that. That's not for me. These are very simple things, guys, that even your most advanced traders will still be using. Other than that, folks, it has been a pleasure. It looks like everyone's got it under control. 
Uh, if you do have any questions past this point, you can always contact us. You can you can request a private mentoring session. You can go to any of our pre-recorded lessons. We've got a ridiculous amount of pre-recorded lessons out there with a ton of great material. Uh, if you want to, you know, learn a little bit more about Fibonacci or what have you, any of the things that I mentioned, uh, or you can wait until uh, our next webinar where I'll be back and, and we'll be covering another subject. But it's been a pleasure as always, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful Monday trading today and a wonderful trading week. Keep killing the markets, guys. Best of luck, everyone. Happy trading, and I'll see you real soon. It's been a pleasure, everybody. This is Chris signing off. Thank you very much, everyone. See you soon.